Hey everybody, it's Craig Becker here, and today I'm joined with Daria Fassoon, and she's going to give us some tips on Black Magic Da Vinci Resolve 17.2 at the time of this recording. So I'll let you take it away, share your screen, and just share your knowledge with us. Uh, so I'm actually working on one of the new timelines that comes in the, uh, the beginner's guide uh, that's just been uploaded last week uh, on the, the Black Magic uh, training page. And yeah, so we're talking today about color management and uh, uh, Craig, do you, do you want to take this in a certain direction? Do um, maybe we could start with um, starting with the preferences and then uh, color management for Mac users. So if somebody's just on an iMac or maybe a MacBook Pro and they don't have an external monitor that they're using a deck link card with, so what would their settings be? Right. So yeah, color management, if anyone's attempted it, will probably know that uh, there's quite a lot of variables uh, that might make you feel less confident about using it or enabling it, uh, because you're not always certain uh, if the output is accurate or if you're setting it up um, the way it's meant to be set up. And I think there's maybe a slightly like added layer of difficulty for Mac users because uh, Apple's uh, workstations in particular have a lot of under the hood color management of its own. So for example, uh, Apple monitors will have their own ICC display uh, profiles, uh, which means that uh, basically the colors are being managed and output in a particular way, almost like there's a, a LUT or a lookup table being applied. Um, this, you'd be familiar with this if you've ever worked with projectors or even um, any kind of television set in general. They also tend to have their own color profiles and they're also performing some sort of shift. Um, you, can, you know, if you've ever played around with the TV settings, you'll see that there's like, you know, a game mode or sports mode. So it's kind of like on that level of something internally happening that the manufacturer has uh, decided upon and not uh, the software developer, like the issue is all in this case. So um, first of all, you probably want to determine what kind of profile your monitor is using. Uh, for uh, Apple, it's usually sRGB, which is like the older uh, standard. Nowadays, uh, the standards tend to be display P3. If you go into your system preferences and uh, you go to the displays tab, look under color, you will uh, find out uh, what your display profile is. Uh, so that's a pretty good reference for what your output color space uh, should be set to so that you know you're accurately viewing it on your monitor if you don't have a dedicated uh, external grading monitor. So there's um, another thing you have to take into account uh, if you're working on an Apple workstation. And that is that it also has uh, an internal application called ColorSync that is constantly monitoring and managing the metadata uh, of your videos and your images uh, to match them to a, a single like uh, color output. Uh, so for example, things tend to look identical across uh, Safari, across QuickTime, uh, Final Cut Pro. But DaVinci Resolve as an external or third-party software uh, does not fall under that ColorSync umbrella. So this is where we need to go into the DaVinci Resolve preferences and pretty much uh, ensure that it is recognized by ColorSync and also uh, managed on a metadata level. Uh, so actually, <laughs> I won't be able to show this because I am ironically on a PC, uh, but uh, I will show you where it is. So DaVinci Resolve preferences in the top left corner in the system tab on, under general. So you can see, I don't actually have this option because uh, I'm on a PC, but Craig, if you want to do, you know, switch to your screen share. Yeah, sure. I can share my screen. Do primarily all my color grading on a Mac until just recently. So I just got this LG that you see in this shot yesterday. So I'll be using the DeckLink mini monitor 4K. That's another video. So we won't talk about it in this one, but uh, for the Mac settings, normally I'll go to preferences like you mentioned, and then you said general. General. And then I would have this checked, use Mac display color profiles for viewers and yeah. automatically tag Rec. 709 scene clips as Rec. 709A. So that's so that when you export to a QuickTime file, that your color looks the same as what you're looking at in your viewer. So I, that's kind of an issue. So we can talk about the export settings as well. Yeah. And then for project settings, normally what I would do is I'd go to project settings, I'd go to color management, and then recently I switched to DaVinci Wide Gammon after I saw a video that you were talking about. And so that's what I would usually use. And then for, I tried a couple of different things. So I recommend too, um, maybe experimenting, but normally I would do Rec 709A, that would give it the tag and everything would work great. But I was experimenting after watching your video. And so I tried Rec 709 2.4 
So I would say maybe do an export if you're a Mac user in both of those uh, output color spaces and see if you see a difference. Also to maybe upload them to YouTube and don't publish them right away, see how they look on YouTube because sometimes things can be different. But uh, those are the settings. And then as far as the export settings, I'll share those with you too. I go to file. Go Sorry, ahead. Craig, if I can make a couple of notes. Sure. Uh, so regard in, uh, Regards to the preferences, uh, those uh, pertain more to how you view the colors as opposed to how they're uh, rendered. Okay. Um, so that's why we have like separate color tag uh, settings in, in the deliver page. Um, and I believe like the setting in particular for Rec 709 doesn't specifically say that it is for uh, the viewer, but it just says automatically tag Rec 709 scene clips of Rec 709. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but scene clips are usually uh, things that are generators in DaVinci Resolve. Um, so things like, you know, the color bars and uh, certain types of graphics, titles. Uh, so those types of generators will be tagged as Rec. 709 versus uh, Rec. 719. Uh, but even after all this setup, you know, the preferences, there is still a separate stage in the deliver page where we have to take care of the actual deliverables and maintain how those are uh, output. Um, and you just showed uh, how we went into the project settings and you changed, uh, was it the output color space? Yeah. To, uh, to Rec. 709A. And that's uh, that's all right. Uh, I mean, that will work probably for the majority of applications if you're working on a Mac, uh, yeah. but you have to take into account that uh, not all applications are color managed. So something like Firefox, for example, or VLC, yeah. Uh, the, does not color manage, right? So then it will actually interpret it as Rec. 709A with a 111 color profile, which means that once again, there might actually be a slight shift. So that's the benefit of using color tags as opposed to using uh, just like a blanket, you know, color space for the entire project is that you are able to maintain um, a more standardized uh, color space, you know, like Gamma 2.4 but you're also able to embed these color space tags that only certain application, uh, applications will employ on a need, you know, uh, need to basis. So yeah. things like, you know, QuickTime will uh, employ those tags in Safari, uh, whereas, you know, VLC and Firefox will bypass them uh, and show pretty much the same colors, you know, in both, in both cases. Okay, so uh, let's so go over some export settings then for Mac users. I'll show you the ones I've been using and then maybe you can steer me in the right direction if I'm wrong. Okay, so I had a custom one set here. I've got format QuickTime and H.264. But I've also heard that sometimes people use H.265 with YouTube and that it might be better, but I haven't really seen a visual difference. And then as far as uh, encoding profile and this one, I've got auto. And then when it comes down to advanced settings, I just have a color space tag, same as project and gamma tag, same as project. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Is there anything I'm missing there as far as? So, so if your output, output color space is Rec. 709A, then uh, you're perfectly fine to leave it as is. Uh, oh, okay. If you had did have it set to Gamma 2.4, then that's when you would have to pretty much kind of override it. Not override it, sorry, but to embed the, the, um, the Gamma tag yeah. uh, to Rec. 709A. And that way you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get like non-color managed applications will uh, display the colors correctly and so will color managed. Uh, like Apple-based applications. Yeah, because that's another thing too. Actually, I'll stop sharing my screen and then I think our faces will be bigger. But um, so yeah, that's confusing because depending on how they view a bit, like say a video on YouTube, whether it be Firefox, Chrome or Safari, sometimes they handle color differently as well. So I don't think there's really one solution to that, is there, or is it? Is it by yeah. tagging at 709A? Well, you definitely want to, like you said, uh, run some experiments and see what, what works best. Uh, but if you export it in um, a Rec. 709 uh, Gamma 2.4 standard, then you're pretty much covering all the bases for the non-color managed applications. Uh, but then by including the 709A tag, you are then taking care of like the rest of the applications that do have internal color management. So that kind of um, gets you clear on both fronts. Whereas yeah. if, you, if you export as Rec. 709A, then you're kind of enforcing this gamma curve uh, this one 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 versus you know the one two one color space uh, color profile tag. Uh, so then in that case, non color uh, managed applications like um, Firefox will actually ship 
and gamma so that they will display slightly differently. But then, yeah, it also comes down to things like, um, you know, YouTube and Vimeo as well, uh, make sure that it uh, displays correctly. So the, the great thing about using the color tags is that once you render it out of uh, DaVinci Resolve with those embedded color tags, they will display correctly on YouTube and Vimeo. And if you were to transcode clips out of QuickTime, uh, those colors will be maintained as well. Uh, so they'll continue to uh, present correctly on your workstation. Um, I think yeah. I have a better handle on things. So you wrote a book. Is it out yet? Actually, it just came out today. Yeah. Oh, it just came out today. So yeah. where can we find it? Is it available like on Amazon or? It's, it might be available on Amazon. I think they do upload like, uh, like a hard copy and a Kindle version. But okay. you could just head on over to Black Magic Design's training page and you can get a free PDF version of the book. Oh, exactly. so it's free. So it's not even, it, wow. Okay. You can't really beat that then. But a lot of people don't like to read. That's why they watch YouTube videos. So is that if you could just highlight some pages in the book, do you think that would be most pertinent for someone? Like if they're only going to read two pages? Because <laughs> I'm imagining it's a huge book because it's like the Black Magic, Da Vinci, you know, who, who's read the whole manual? Like it's, it's massive. So if someone were to just read a few pages, what do you, what would you suggest the most important stuff? Uh, you know, it's a good question because it depends on what you're, you're trying to achieve or who you're trying to be. So if you do, are just interested in, um, in just picking up color or even understanding what it's for, then probably the first two pages, you know, of the first lesson where you talk, we talk about balancing and normalizing footage would probably be a good way to get started and really understand, you know, like what our purpose is. But there's also a couple of like theoretical paragraphs dotted here and there where we talk about when do we start breaking the rules of uh, color correction? You know, when it, does it actually work against us? You know, so my favorite like lesson in the book or my favorite lesson to teach is uh, lesson five, which is where we start to talk about the node pipeline and talk about why we want to like compartmentalize our grades or break them up into steps uh, and how we can maintain the quality of the video signal throughout. Uh, so that's probably my second recommendation. Yeah. So do you have a video, like a new series of videos that go with the new book coming out or? It's, yeah. Oh, it's a secret. Okay. Yes, hush, hush. Well, oh. yeah, the, the plan is to like the previous videos were for version 15. Yeah. And uh, there were, I mean, obviously changes between 15 and 16, but they were minor enough that you could still follow the videos and still kind of recognize everything. But with version 17, there's been some pretty major shifts, uh, yeah. the new palettes added to the color page. So yeah, there will be uh, updates, but I can't, you know, in an official- We'll have to stay tuned for that. Yeah, because yeah. I, I was watching a video that I think that you did and it was the HDR. Uh, controls and I was playing around with those and yeah you you can see the ranges and you can sort of visualize it a little bit better but maybe that'll be a different video. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, your tips are helpful. I watch uh, your videos all the time and it's exciting to meet you and uh, hear from you directly. But anyway, thanks again and uh, hopefully we can talk again in the future. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Craig. Thanks.